Hi, I'm John Mortimer. I'm going to take you through two different ways of designing a service. The first will be the traditional way of how we normally design services. And the next one will be how we can design services using a systems thinking and complexity approach. And I'm going to be using this model that you see here, the three diamonds, as the, as the way to design a new service. But first, before we do that, what does it look like when we design services from a traditional perspective? We tend to start with what matters to the organization with respect to what the service should be. We look at customers and we analyze customers and we get feedback from what they want. And then we will put people together that need to be part of designing the new service. And there are all different elements of the organization and perhaps stakeholders. And they develop what they need for the new service. And these are things like the rules, the permissions. This is all linked to the strategy that the organization has, the personas, the process and procedures, the templates, etc. And then from there, we develop the new service redesign. The, at this point, we then develop the mission and the vision and the culture of what that service should look like. We begin to train staff to work in that service. Oh, and before we do that, we might get staff to the frontline staff to look at the new design and give us some comments so that we can adjust it. So we train the new staff and we encourage them, we communicate with them as to how great this is. And it's tricky, but we get there in the end. The power of this approach lies with this group here. And they retain that power all the way through, not just the redesign, but all the way through the operations. And when changes are needed, they're the ones that will generally define what that change needs to be. So what we're going to do in this case now is we're going to look at a different method. And this method starts with understanding the customer and the organization, but from a systemic perspective. And then there'll be a decision as to whether we go ahead to the experiment mode. And in the experiment, that team of people will work together to learn how a new service can actually work using a different set of principles to what they normally use before. And when they've done that, we'll come out with developing a prototype. And that prototype will be the essence of the new way of working. That prototype are all the elements that are needed for the new design. And we're going to go through this now in more detail. So the way that we start is we get a team together and that team are people that are involved in the end to end service and a manager and a senior manager. And it very often includes the support staff as well. And what we'll do is we'll spend time understanding what it's like to be a customer of ours at the moment and how we currently work. So we haven't made any changes. We're just looking at those things. Then we move on to the experiment. And what we do here is we experiment with customer demands as a team. We have permission to develop a new, a new way of working with a new set of principles. And those are systems thinking based sets of principles. We take the demands individually and we deal with them in new ways. And each time we deal with one, we learn, we learn more than we learned before. And over time, we find out how best to really understand the customer and to take this forward in a way that makes sense. What happens is the, the way that we focus during the experiment is that we're focusing on what matters to the customer and we're focusing on the purpose 
driven by the customer. So this is just in a room, in what I call the bubble. And there'll be times when we do need to engage with other parts of the organization. But the way that we engage with them is that we go to them and we get those elements that we need to, that will help us to develop a new way of working. But we translate what is out there into the way of working that we want in the room. The people in the bubble will make the decisions and they can't be imposed by those outside of the bubble. And as that team move from the experiment to the prototype, the manager becomes full time in the team and they start to develop those artifacts that they need to run the new service. So they develop all those things that they have that they have learnt works and they develop the templates, the processes, the frameworks, the way that decisions are being made. And then after that, when that's when that's being completed and they start to move to the new way of working, then they start to bring their colleagues in to work with them together in that bubble and that bubble gets bigger and bigger and that becomes a new service. So that's a very different way of developing the service. But what's interesting is that the power remains there. It remains with the customer and what matters to the customer. And it's driven by the purpose. And any changes that are made are changed within that bubble, within the service itself. So that's what I wanted to show you. And I hope that it helps to highlight the two different ways of working. Thank you.